Welcome to part seven of the Great War. Now we're going to take a look at the war at home. So while the war is raging on in, in Europe, Woodrow Wilson is trying to take things back here at home. There's a couple things he's trying to do. First of all, he's trying to pay for the war. And the way he's going to pay for the war is by trying to get American citizens to purchase liberty bonds or war bonds. This is, a bond is literally where you loan the government money and then you get it back later with interest, right? And the other thing that he's worried about is the potentiality of a fifth column, right? He wants to drum up anti-German sentiment. Because in the United States, he believes it's a real risk of pro-German sympathizers uh, uh, undermining the war effort. Because the United States has a lot of um, uh, people living in it that are of German ancestry. They're first, second generation German Americans, or they're even German immigrants. So how do we make sure that there's enough anti-German sentiment built up that the people will continue to uh, promote the war? Well, what he does is he creates the Committee of Public Information, and he has a friend of his, a Chicago journalist by the name of George Creel, take control of it. And they are going to, he's going to begin to produce all kinds of different things to drum up support of the war, drum up support for buying liberty bonds or war bonds, and drum up anti-German sentiment. So you can see posters like this for the U.S. Army enlistment to be uh, produced. And when you take a look at this, you see a ton of symbolism here, right? Look at this, destroy this mad brute. And take a look at that that ape, right? This beast is a German. You can tell because you can see the little German hat on there with the little, you know, post fence top on it. And it says militarism across the top. And of course, in his hand is the is a bloody club and it says culture on it, right? The German spelling of culture. And then you got the damsel in distress, right? The uh, lady liberty or freedom or democracy. She can represent a lot of things like that. And here he is setting foot on American soil, and you can see across the pond a burning Europe in the background. Tons of symbolism, right? All designed to try and drum up support for joining the army and fighting the evil Germans, right? He's also going to send about 75,000 men around the nation to give these four-minute long speeches. They'll call them four-minute men, right? Uh, these four-minute men will give speeches to approximately 300 million listeners during the war. And again, their job in these four-minute speeches was to uh, promote the sale of war bonds, uh, drum up enthusiasm for the war, and drum up anti-German sentiment. And the anti-German sentiment would become really strong. You're going to see anti-German movies like The Kaiser, The Beast of Berlin, The Hell with the Kaiser, and my personal favorite, The Claws of the Hun, right? Uh, but you're also going to see things like book burnings. There'll be German book burnings. Uh, there will be um, uh, the destruction of works of, of music by Mozart, or by, excuse me, not Mozart, by Beethoven, for example, things like that. Uh, universities are going to discontinue their entire German department. You're not going to be able to learn the German language anymore. The city of Cincinnati banned the sale of pretzels because pretzels are a German snack, right? I mean, it gets weird. For example, uh, you can't call Frankfurters Frankfurters anymore. You could call them hot dogs instead, right? Uh, that's stuck. We still mostly call them that today. Uh, for, uh, hamburgers? I uh, can't call it a hamburger anymore. No, nope, that's German, right? So what do you call them now? Well, Liberty steaks, of course, right? Um, what about uh, dachshunds? Can you call a dachshund a dachshund anymore? Oh, no way. No. Liberty hounds, right? German shepherds, well, that's clearly verboten. They'll call those Alastations, right? Al Al Alastation, Alsatians are still called that today uh, in many cases, right? Uh, how about this? Sauerkraut. Liberty cabbage. You know, you couldn't even diagnose anyone with the German measles. They had the Liberty measles. Now, this is also going to lead to some violence. You're going to have some lynching of, uh, of German nationals or German Americans even, right? For example, uh, on April 4th, 1919, a mob of somewhere between three and four, 400 uh, people took a German alien by the name of Robert Paul Prager from the jail that he was in and uh, hung him. What was he accused of? He was accused of making, quote, disloyal utterances, unquote. That's it. He was allowed to write a final note to his parents, right? In that note, he wrote, Dear parents, 
I must, on the day April, uh, on this day of April 1918, die. Please pray for me, my dear parents. And then he muttered a prayer in German, which incensed the crowd even more, and they had hung him from the nearest tree, right? The federal government's going to get involved in this as well, uh, including acts that some would deem as unconstitutional. For example, on, in June of 1917, Congress is going to pass the Espionage Act. Now, this is going to levy penalties of up to 30 years in prison for anyone interfering with the success of the armed forces, including operations or recruitment. Right. The Espionage Act will be followed up in May of 1918 with the Sedition Act. The Sedition Act uh, levied fines of up to $10,000 and up to 20 years in prison for, quote, using profane, scandalous or abusive language against the Constitution, the military or the flag. Insulting the, the United States flag became a federal offense. If you literally could take a look at the U.S. flag and go, you know what, I just never really liked that shade of blue. Wish it was a brighter blue. You could go to jail for 20 years for just saying that, right? You can't insult the Constitution. You can't say uh, anything against the military. Uh, you can't interfere with the success of the armed forces. I mean, you can see how this is going to have an effect. Eugene V. Debs is going to fall victim of this. Now, remember I said before, any time we talk about Eugene V. Debs, he's going to jail, right? He is going to give a speech in Canton, Ohio, on June 16, 1918, right, in which he said, says in this speech, the working class has never yet had a voice in declaring war. If war is right, let it be declared by the people, you who have your lives to lose. That's all he said. It was kind of an anti-war part of this speech he was given. But at this point, he's an avowed socialist. Uh, he will be arrested, charged with violating the Espionage Act, and he will be uh, sentenced to 10 years in prison, right? A uh, woman, a socialist by the name of Kate O'Hare, will also fall afoul of the, uh, of the Espionage and Sedition Acts when she gave a speech in which she said, the women in the United States are nothing more or less but brood sows to raise children to get into the army and to be made into fertilizer. And she's going to get five years in prison for that. Now, Warren G. Harding, after the war is over, is going to pardon both of them, right? Um, I think the, probably the most tragic story of some of these ones that fell victim to the federal laws uh, against uh, sedition and espionage is Robert Goldstein. Robert Goldstein was a German-Jewish immigrant, right, who had made actually a lot of money as an investor in D.W. Griffith's movie, The Birth of a Nation. Now, he had taken money he had made off of that, about $200,000, and he used it to produce a movie called The Spirit of 76. Now, The Spirit of 76 is a revolutionary war movie, right? And it premiered in Chicago in May of 1917. However, it kind of fell, put him afoul with the authorities. And the reason why is during the American Revolution, the bad guys were the British. And now that we were at war with Germany, the good guys are the British. Now, this movie, of course, depicts... Uh, the British in kind of a negative light. So he was told, he says, you've got to edit all these parts out of this movie. Now, he tried to. He said, okay, fine, I'll do that. And he did, right? Um, he edited these parts out, really butchered his own movie. But an unedited version got shown in Los Angeles later on in that year, and he was arrested and charged with violating the uh, Sedition Act, right? In the resulting case, U.S. versus Spirit of 76, he was found guilty, sentenced to 10 years in, in, uh, in prison, and fined $5,000. And he was pretty much forgotten about. He was left financially ruined and literally destroyed by these laws, 